The word, interesting enough, has a transforming effect in our lives. When we hear it, and not with these ears, when we hear it with our heart. How many of us I know the word says you'll know the truth and the truth will what? Make you free. So there's a knowing involved. But in that knowing, it's not just knowing in your head. It's when you know something. When you really, when you just know something, you act on it. You speak it. I mean, you know that you live at a specific address. You act on it, don't you? You speak it. There's no confusion at all where you live. And that's the knowing I'm talking about. When the word becomes something you know. It, actually the word is called light. It, have you ever been in a conversation with someone and you say, oh, I don't see that. And then all of a sudden, oh yeah, I see that. I see what you're talking about. You see what I'm saying? Because it's, it's something, it's like a light. The light has come. So the word, and it's transforming us as we come to know it. That's why I want to encourage you to spend time in the word. Does the sound sound different to you? No. No? Well, it sounds odd to me. Okay. It's distracting, but I'll get over it. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Um, I'll just, uh, where was I now? Let me regroup. Thank you, Lord. Think about this transformation that's taking place as we hear the word, giving it attention, giving it the honor that it deserves. What is it transforming us into? Have you really ever thought about it? Yeah, we read yeah, into his image. Meditate, take a see law moment, think about what his intent for that word is to change us, transform us into. It's to transform us into God himself. Just like God. Have you ever thought about it? Look at it in that light. God said in the beginning, this was his heart, his mind from the beginning, that we would be made, created in his image and likeness. In other words, just like him. That's an amazingly deep thought, isn't it? Take a seat, let that sink in. He, his word will change us into himself. Someone just like him. Something just like him. That means there ought to be a glory and a light radiating out from us. Our, our, doesn't the Bible say we are to let our light shine? We are vessels of light. There ought to be a difference when one of us walk into a room. I've, the Lord's given me some direction on where to go with some of these things, the, where the subject that I'm, at, I'm on, and I'll be, it's, it's not a real long subject, but we'll be on it probably a week or two, maybe three, I'm not sure, it's how the Lord leads. Because um, you know that we're, the, the, the God is moving in the earth today. There's a transformation that he's expecting to begin to happen in the body of Christ. Does anybody else recognize that? I recognize. I know there's a move of God taking place. Well, where does judgment begin? In the house. So some of these things will be transforming. Some of these things that I'm going to be speaking on will build you up. Some of these things are very sobering thoughts. Because it's the word. But be encouraged because all the meanwhile, his intent is to take us into a higher place. 
that we begin to walk in a higher realm than where we have been walking in. Many of these things will find out that we already know them, but they have slipped. I think I got somebody's attention at that time. So I'm going to start and find Matthew 6, please. We will be going a few places in the Bible this morning as I begin to lay some foundation for this. It actually began several weeks ago, but we never got really, I didn't get too far in it. You probably have heard some people have wondered, where did that wolf teaching come from? Well, it came from where we're going right now. How many ever heard of the wolf in the Bible? <laughs> Do you know who he is? It's Satan and his demons. It's called the spirit of division. The evil one, the, devi the uh, deceiver from the beginning. Or you could call him the antichrist. You know what that means. Break down the word anti. Christ. What does Christ mean? Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. The anti-anointing. Anti-Jesus. Anti-anointing. He's out to destroy, remove the word. He can't destroy it, but he can remove it. See, Satan has no power. His greatest power is deception. And he cannot manifest himself like any other spirit without a human body to respond. Do you realize that? He needs us to respond in order for him to be manifest in the earth. So he works in our minds and it's very gradual. It's kind of like, I, I heard the um, Reinhard Bunke used this illustration. I think it's wonderful. How could a, anybody ever seen, came up to a very, very large ship in the water? I mean, it's almost like, it's like bigger than buildings. How could a single man move a ship? You think it's possible? You think you could back up and run as hard as you can, like a linebacker football. I guess it'd be linebacker, wouldn't it? I'm not that familiar with football. I like to play it, but I don't care to watch it that much. Uh, you think you could back up and charge it and slam against it and have an impact and move it? No. No. How would you move it? Pressure. Just steady. Just start leaning on it. And little by little, it'll begin to move. I mean, if Satan came out here, if he could, with his red suit, his horns, and his pitchfork, jumped in front of him, he went, boom! We would know it was him. We'd recognize him in the room, wouldn't we? So, what if he comes, he uses this method of just leaning a little bit of pressure. What do you think would happen? The anti-anointing, the anti-Christ would begin to manifest. The deception would begin to be operating. <clears throat> what did I say to go? Matthew 6, right? Verse 33, I'll start. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of you may have not known this place, but you know this verse. How many know these are red letters? <laughs> In fact, I would encourage you to do a little study here. Because this, I don't, do you have red letters in your Bible? Okay, I do. And it goes all the way back to chapter 5. You ever wondered what Jesus preaching would sound like? 
We'll pick up in chapter 5, I think around verse 3, and read it till the red letters stop and you'll hear one of his sermons. <clears throat> you won't have to wonder anymore. You'll begin to hear it. You know, we do need to spend time to get to know the Word. That is getting to know Jesus. That is getting to know our God, our Father. You know, it's, it's kind of like with the songs we sing. I don't want to sing about God. I want to sing to God. How many of you would feel, how would you feel if I came into the room and I just started talking about you rather than talking to you? You feel kind of left out, wouldn't you? <laughs> we should get to know our God. We should get to know his word. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Remember, we did a little study on righteousness. That is, the Amplified Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things and making things right. How many know there's a lot of wrong in this world? Can his word make it right? Can he make your life right? So we would have to learn his word and not just his power, because this book really isn't about his power. It's about his commitment to his men and his willingness to, to show his power on behalf of his men. Have you ever realized that? It's not a book about his power, but I'm telling you, he's willing to use it on your behalf. The Israelites never entered into the promised land. Do you know what that means? Until the next generation. The promised land is entering into the blessing that we have in the new covenant. Remember Galatians 3.13 and 14. We were there for a little while. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Having become a curse for us, where it is written, curses every man who hangs on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham would come upon the Gentiles. That blessing was the promised land of everything you ever needed provided for you. Your health, your wealth, your prosperity, your dominion in the earth. How many know Abraham had some dominion? I mean, his own household whooped nations went out and fought nations, his own household and his servants. How many know that's an influence in the earth? Was that an example of the body of Christ? Let me ask you, is that an example of the body of Christ? And he gives us here in these red letters that I've been referring to, from Matthew 5 to Matthew, I believe it goes to 8, 7 or 8, I know it goes through 7. <clears throat> And he gives us some important keys to walking in that dominion, to a laying hold of our inheritance and the blessing of the Lord. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his ways of doing things. That's very important. And we're also brought out the righteousness also is the very nature of God. Do you know what I mean by when I say the nature of God? The nature of a thing, I, 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 had it, I had it written down, but it's like, you know, by nature, the nature of a bird is to fly south in the wintertime. It has a nature. The, a dog has a nature. Do you know what I'm talking about? Going back to really what's inside and who he is, right? Well, the nature of God. Seeking, we got to know because, because of the curse, the fall of man, the fall of man created a new nature inside of man. Do you know that? We fell, mankind fell to the depth of curse. And Jesus came and gave us the, the privilege of being reborn on the inside so that we take on a new nature. And now the transformation, and that's the first step. Now this new nature needs to be developed. 
so that we learn how to walk in his ways of dominion. The kingdom, that's the king and his realm of dominion. Do you know you have authority in the earth? Do you know that you have dominion over sickness, over fear, the, over the curse that's in this world? Do you know that? You have dominion, believe it or not, over the spirits that are influencing people to come against you because it's affecting you. Do you realize that? If it's affecting you, it has to do with your world, so it affects your realm of dominion. You can take authority over somebody attacking you because it's not that person doing it. There is a spirit behind it that's influencing them that they yielded to, and that's the spirit that's attacking you. Do you realize that? So seek ye first his ways, the kingdom of God, this realm of dominion of taking authority. Do you know if somebody's holding back money that's owed to you, you can take authority over that spirit and get that money released? Let me ask you something else. See, this is the principle of sowing that Ed talked about. Because of this realm of dominion, this kingdom that we've been placed into, this realm of dominion, his way of operation is the wealth of this, of this world belongs to the body of Christ. I can sow a seed because this is his ways. I can sow a seed in faith and it, that will cause wealth to come to me. Did you know that? That is a harvest of something I've sowed. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. Do you know that? See, so there's ways of operation in this kingdom. We're not just a group of people that come to church and, okay, feed me, hear me a word, and I'll walk out. We are learning, getting that word put inside of us so we are transformed into his image. How many know God is not defeated? Can you defeat God? Well, should this world or these demons be able to defeat his children? No. So I've got to learn his method of operation because the spirit realm, this world that we do not see is operating right now. Everything that's taking place. How many of you recognize there's a lot of division in this earth? Yeah. So what spirit is in dominion? But you realize we are the ecclesia of God. We are the ones that God has ordained and sent out to govern this world. So I've got to be transformed by the renewing of my mind so that I learn how to operate in this realm and his ways of doing things and making things right. And now ever since the beginning, the Antichrist, <clears throat> Satan and his kingdom has been operating against the body of Christ. How many know that? Right from the very, very beginning, man. I mean, right in the beginning, man. Adam didn't last long and Satan came in and deceived Eve, but he willingly submitted it or yielded himself to the works of the enemy. The words of the enemy. And he's been consistent ever since then. Because he is, as Jesus said, the anti-anointing. The anti-yoke-removing, burden-destroying power of God. And what has happened is, um, with this slight pressure, leaning, we've come to the place, many places, and in our lives, where, as Paul said in the book of Hebrews, we ought to be teaching others, but yet we're still sucking on the milk. 
We've come to a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. How many of you recognize there's not enough power of God being displayed in the body of Christ? Well, we're going to hit on a few things. Go up to, well, it's the top of the page in my book. I'm not sure what. Verse 24. I'm just going to hit on a few things here. Some of this we know. The thing is, it's not the truth that we know in our head, but the truth that we do that makes the difference. Am I right? Because you can know something, do something else, and it don't mean a thing. Except you know something. <laughs> but that's not the know. I'm knowing. I'm talking about knowing. I'm talking about having an intimate relationship with this word where it's living on the inside of you, where you get to know it. He said, no one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. Do you remember we did a little study on the honor of God? Those who honor him, he will honor. The greatest way, number one way he honors us is with his presence. How many want his presence? I do. I want it more and more. What's it going to Excuse me, what's it going to take? A greater degree of honor. He's kind of referring to this here. He'll despise. Well, that means you just... Let me put it this way. To despise, the Bible definition of despise means it ain't number one. It's number two, number three, number four number five, and so on. It's somewhere else other than number one. Because you cannot serve God and mammon. Let me tell you, the biggest, and the biggest, well, that's the right word, Lord. Well, God said, he said, you shall have no other gods before me. We, you know, we, we tend to think, well, you know, Buddha, Allah, you know, Muhammad or whatever, somebody else, whatever else. The biggest battle you're going to have is you trying to be your own God. In other words, your will, your life, your desires. How many of us, don't raise your hand, please, don't raise your hand. <laughs> I found out you do a lot of what you want. <laughs> Rather than what he wants. I can feel that. That's the battle right there. G uh, 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 what's her name? She wrote a book, The Battlefield of the Mind. Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer. Because it is. He's, the enemy is constantly coming at us with thoughts and suggestions, right? To get you to yield. And sometimes, many times, it's what your flesh wants. Am I touching anybody? <laughs> and so we end up having another master, my life, my desire. How many know we are to take up his cross and follow after him? And if I lose my life, I will find it. Is that, and that's in red letters, isn't it? Is that a true statement? So, there's this constant laying down of my will and my desires and making him my master. Let's say uh, Chuck gets mad at me and he says a few words, gets in my face. Whether I hit him or not is going to determine who's my master. 
Whether I say something back at him is going to deter, reflect who is my master. I'm just using Chuck. I'm not going to do anything now. I love this guy. But I'm using that as an example because it's so easy because we're so used to yielding to the flesh and the spirits that have been, the Bible calls them familiar spirits. You know what I mean by that? They are very familiar with you. They've been hanging around you. They've probably been hanging around your parents for gen and your grandparents, maybe for generations. They know all about you. They know what makes you happy, what you won't like. They know what buttons to push. And you ever remember the little cartoon, the little, little devil sitting on your shoulder? Well, the, the enemy, he don't play fair. He's a deceiver. So maybe there's this little guy hanging around me, but he'll come over there and jump on his shoulder and say, because he knows what pushes my buttons. And he'll whisper something in his ear. Next thing you know, Chuck gets a thought. So he says it. Then he's back over. You, whoa, you know what he did? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why am I here? I don't know. But that's not. <laughs> oh, we cannot serve two masters. Let's go over to first. Um, <clears throat> No, let's go to uh, John 10. Keep your hand here, finger mark it, something, because we may be going back. John 10. What is it we seek first? His kingdom. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm going to stop here, and then we're going to go to 1 John 1, 5. This is John 10, 1. Something don't look right. Okay. Most assuredly I say to you, is this a truth when he says most assuredly? King James probably says verily, verily. Yeah. I say, who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but, clum but climbs up in some other way, the same as a thief and a robber? Is there? Jesus said, I am the door to the Father. No one gets to the Father except through me. Is he the door? Is there another way? He said, I am the way. Not a way. The way. The truth and the life. Is there another way? See, here's the that little bit of leaning that I was referring to has brought in other ways into the church. It's brought in other ways into my life and your life so that we say, well, here's one. You can't tell me to pray how to pray. I know how to pray. I pray my way, just me and God. I know how to, me and God. I know how to pray. Is there a way that the Bible tells us to pray? I'll get into that. I'm going to break some of that down because the Lord just instructed me to do that. But do you see what I'm saying? People have the idea I can do it my way. Is there another way? Let me ask you that. Is there another way? How about something like, um, okay, God appoints you to come to a certain church. I'm just using this because I'm, well, we're in church. Well, I don't like the way they're doing that. I don't like the way they treat me. I don't like the way they looked at me today. Let me ask you, is there another way? Yeah. Is there another master? So should I be going to that place? Or should I decide, well, I think you should be doing something else. It's interesting because people people come that, you know, uh, you know, we've been doing this a little while. People come in and at first, you know, everything's good. <laughs> and then they come up with ideas. Well, I think you should be doing this. I, I think you should be doing that. I don't think you should do this. Do you know what I'm talking about? What changed from that first week to that third month? What changed? Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself because the previous verse, so you should not have any masters, is, is um, the eye is the lamp of the soul. 
What are you looking at? It happens in marriages. It happens in all kinds of relationships and circumstances. You get married. I mean, I think I gave an example a few weeks ago. Man, you're dating this woman. Man, and you sit down and you talk to them. Tell me, and you say, write down everything you find negative about that person. Man, they'll be sitting there all star. Nothing. I just love the way they do everything. Oh. Well, I'll let them get married. Give them a few months. All of a sudden, that blank sheet of paper starts to get filled out. What changed? What you're looking at. The perception. What you're looking at begin to change. It's that because he is the spirit of division. He will divide families. He'll divide marriages. He'll divide children from their parents, parents from their children. He'll divide the nation. He'll divide the church. He's constantly leaning. Do you see how he's working? And that what happens is that is another way, isn't it? Is there another way for me to get to the Father and to walk and operate in this kingdom of God? There is no other way than by this word. I'm trying to keep this light and easy. <laughs> and, um, go over to 1 John 1. These are some, some of these sobering thoughts. How many of you can say you never knew this? You can raise your hand now. Say you didn't, but because of this pressure that's been leaning to move us out from this realm of dominion. You know, I, 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 years ago I listened to some teachings. Well, it was like a testimony teaching of a... How many know that there are there are ranks and positions of authority in the kingdom of God. The enemy cannot create, so he has to pervert something that's already created. Well, in his kingdom, he has different positions of rank and authority. Sometimes we refer to these as witches, warlocks, right? You follow me as far as people? <laughs> that have yielded or submitted themselves to different spirits. And anyway, there was, a, there was this person that had been high-ranking in the kingdom of darkness. And it's kind of like the mafia. You don't get out unless you die. They kill each other to, promote, to, to, to be promoted. They do all kinds of things. And they were given examples of what they did to water down the church because they have an assignment. How many know they are the anti-anointing, yeah. the anti-Christ? And, and in it, it was given a story, a testimony. This person, I mean, thank God, you know, God's kingdom is much greater, much more powerful, much more authority than the kingdom of darkness. But anyway, there were many attempts made on this person's life because they had left. But thank God, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world, man. And anyway, they're giving testimony. She, and they, she's talking about they would come to a, they would find, they knew where there was a church or an assembly. How many know we are not a gathering? We are an assembly. We are supposed to be assembling. We just don't come and meet. We are to be assembling ourselves. Do you know what I mean? That means, well, you just don't come in five minutes after service and leave just before we're ready to dump. get over. Does it? Because are you assembling? <laughs> it's kind of hard to practice with this COVID thing, but you know what I'm saying. That means being knit together. Coming together. Knitting together. How many know there is strength in numbers? Amen. The anointing multiplies. The Bible said one will put a thousand to flight. Now he's referring to the anointing that's on the born again believer. The power of God. 
When two come together, we are 10,000 times more powerful in the Spirit. That's one of the reasons God ordained marriage. Because you and your spouse walking together in that anointing are 10,000 times more powerful against the spirits of this world than you are separate. Do you realize that? Well, what about if four of us come together? Or six, or eight, or ten, or twenty, fifty, a hundred, hundred, two hundred? How much power can be generated loose in the earth? What's really neat about it is, I don't know, have you ever experienced much about being around the anointing? You come in here, let's say, use this place as an example. You come in here, the anointing is powerful. Right? Because there's a corporate anointing, a multiplied anointing, and a multiplied release or manifestation of the power. Did you know, even though you're by yourself, when you walk out of that door, you carry that same power with you for days? God, I love it. You really? You can, do, you can do that? You come out? And so is it important that we assemble with the same heart, one mind, and one accord? It is very important. But anyway, so anyway, they knew about, the enemy knew about these places of anointing. So they would send in their workers. And you know what they did? They began the smooth move of creating a place for them. Let me explain. Well, they get real friendly with the leadership. And they, money starts to come. They start giving larger amounts of money to create a place of influence so they can begin to persuade the leadership. And they would move against the areas of power. In other words, how many know power, prayer is powerful? So they would say, here's an example. Well, instead of an hour of prayer on this certain night, let's work on maybe, let's do this for a half hour and then pray for a half hour. See, they begin to attack and work on the places that produce power. You see what I'm saying? To maybe even eliminate the prayer do they get to the place where they're having, instead of prayer, they're having a bake sale? <laughs> a rummage sale. Ain't nobody want your rummage. Bring new stuff. <laughs> but you hear what I'm saying? Then that's how they do it. It's that little bit of pressure. And that's been coming against us, every one of us. How many can say, yeah, it's been happening in my life. Uh, maybe I won't go to Wednesday night tonight. <laughs> uh, football is probably on. I could probably watch football instead of going to the financial breakthrough class, by the way, which is tonight. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Um, where did I say to go? First John, didn't I? Yeah. Y'all don't mind me down here talking, do you? <laughs> okay. All right. Here's some interesting thoughts here, and then uh, I don't have much time to go on. This is the message which you have we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Is that true? The light of God, the glory of God, the revealing of God. Light is also referred to as a revealing, a revelation. Yeah, I see that. I see what you're talking about. Do you see what I'm saying? That's light. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then he said, let there be light. Did you know that was not sunlight? That was a revealing or a manifestation of God's word himself. 
Let the revealing of God on the earth begin. Light be. We are called children of sons of light. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word was God, and that Word became flesh and became the light of men. There's a revealing. He's declaring to us that revealing light, glorious power of God to us. 2 Corinthians 4 says we have God has commanded that light would shine in our hearts the knowledge of the glory of God and we have that treasure in earthen vessels how many know you have the glory of God the spirit of God himself on the inside of you to flip that switch I'm not wondering <laughs> oh what was I going to no darkness at all. Let me, I'm going to end here. I'm going to leave you head hungry because this is really good. Oh, there's so much here. I don't have time. Don't raise your hand. Because I don't want, but how many of you know what your purpose is? What your calling is? What you were created for? How many of you know it? This is the answer right here, believe it or not. Because in his light, we see light. You've got to become closer to God. When you practice, remember we talked about practicing his presence? There are times in here his presence are so rich. That's the time you really want to press in and draw close and keep that presence of God among you, on upon you. Because in his light, in the revealing of God, there is also, we see light. In other words, he, the, when we walk in that light, that light, that glory, his presence is being revealed to us. That's when you begin to see what you're calling your purpose and what you were created for. Because in his light, in the revealing of himself, there is also revealing to us. Does that make sense? He goes on to say, there is, if we say, look at, look at this, is, this is amazing. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. He didn't say you didn't know. He didn't say you were ignorant. He said, he didn't say, he said, we're lying. Well, I fellowship with God all the time, man. I mean, all the time I'm in the yard. We're buddies, man. We're pals. What's your calling? Where are you heading? What's your purpose? Well, I don't know. You lied. Is that what it said? <laughs> because there's darkness. Should we be drawing close? To God? I didn't want to go there yet. But should we be drawing close and practicing this presence to eliminate all the darkness? Yeah. Glory to God. But see, we have this light in earthen vessels. And I'm going to, we're going to pursue God till that light, that morning star begins to dawn in our hearts. Oh, and we begin to know things. Are you with me? Amen. This is where we're heading with this, where the Lord has showed me. And we're going to point out some things that have slipped, some changed, some important keys. So here's, I want to leave you with this. Where do we start? Seek ye First, the kingdom. the kingdom of God and his ways of doing things and making things right. In this move of God, I can see it. There is a release of power, a release of anointing, a release of light. What's the word? To move us into knowing his ways of doing things. 
There's an empowerment and anointing being released to bring his body up into a higher realm of dominion. Does that make sense? Let me say it another way. We'll be walking in a greater expression of light. Hallelujah. Some of you look too sober. I know I spoke some sobering things. Let me cheer you up. Go to 2 Corinthians. <laughs> I said it already, but I'll read it to you. 2 Corinthians 4, please. This is one of my favorite passages. I say one of them because I, I got many favorites. I got to start in verse 1. It coincides with what I'm teaching. There, I, I'm just amazed that this subject is continually all through the Bible. I have so many references that we could go to. Therefore, since we have this ministry, we have received mercy. We do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in the craftiness or the handling of the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, the revealing of his truth. In other words, the enemy's going like this, but we're standing like this in the power of God. And his truth is making us, keeping us free. Amen. The truth, uh, but by manifestations of truth, commending or showing who we are. Truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our, our, our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this world has blinded. Do you know how the blinding happens? There are people, it, it just seems unreasonable. It's, 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 it's their hate for the president that we have right now is overriding sound thinking. What's that mean? They've been blinded. Well, if there's hate involved, what spirit is involved? It has nothing to do with, with the president himself. It has to do, I'm talking about the blinding of people's eyes. They're operating in hate rather than a love. Whether you like the person or not, there's an office there that we need to respect. Let me move on. Who's the God of this age has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the glory of the anointed one and his anointing, who is the image of God, should shine on him. See, God is bringing us into his own image that we are clothed with glory. Let me jump down to uh, verse 6. For it is uh, God bless you with long life. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. See, he's, he's commanded that light would shine in our hearts. I thought this would excite you. <laughs> it excites me. I, 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 I really thought this would excite you. He's commanded his glory upon you. He's commanded his glory on the inside of you. Let's take the binders off. Begin to recognize we have one master to follow. Verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. Glory to God. Did not confuse anybody today. No. I don't mean it to be too deep. I try to keep it simple, but I don't. 
God wants to pour his spirit not just in you. You have the indwelling. I'm talking about he wants to pour his spirit upon you to where we are little glorious lights all over this world. Walking in a light where we know all things. Then the Bible said that over there, John, we have an anointing of the anointed one and we know all things. That's walking in light. I know what my next step is. I know where I'm going. I know what direction I'm heading. Mm -hmm. We're heading into the image of a glorious church. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet.